So now we are going to talk uh, about something different uh, and something uh, uh, that I feel uh, uh, like innovative uh, and maybe, uh, you know, that may change the way that we measure uh, uh, the focus curve uh, uh, in uh, any refractive uh, surgery uh, procedure. Um, let me start from the very beginning, talking about uh, what the focus curves are. We know that they are subjective measurements uh, for uh, vision performances at different distances. And here is, for example, a binocular defocus curve uh, of one of the trifocal eye wells uh, available on, on the market. The focus curves uh, may be done mono or binocular, we say. They may be uh, performed uh, correcting visual defects uh, or without doing it. Uh, and uh, uh, basically, they all have uh, a weakness, uh, which is the subjectivity of the measurement, meaning that uh, they measure other issues uh, than purely optics, uh, and uh, they are examinator dependent. We will go on these points later. Um, but what is the scope, uh, the reason for doing uh, uh, the focus curves? Well, basically, it's uh, to measure accommodation, uh, and this is uh, usually done uh, to test uh, like a presbyopia correcting solutions. As I said, uh, presbyopia correcting N lenses uh, or, uh, you know, presbilisic uh, or so. And here is the theoretical performance of uh, an EDOF uh, IUL. You see it in, uh, in, uh, in green uh, compared to a bifocal and to a monofocal IUL. And this measure allowed the NC, the standard in the United States, uh, to classify some uh, lenses uh, because uh, they are able to give uh, a certain amount of extension of the depth of focus uh, compared to a monofocal IUL. So even from that perspective, uh, the focus curves uh, may, be, may be useful. Um, what if we be able to objectively measure the optical properties, meaning uh, without going through the subjectivity of uh, not measuring the optics only, but the patient's features uh, that are additional, like the pupil size, uh, like the light conditions uh, when these measures, measurements are taken, or on another side, uh, the real distance uh, where these measures are taken, which may be a bias as well. So the focus curves uh, is uh, subjectively measured uh, with uh, lenses, we said. And uh, this gives uh, the amount of diopters uh, eyes are able to read uh, with or without correction. And the visual acuity is uh, subjectively measured with eyes, unfortunately. And this is the biggest uh, difficulty to overcome uh, if we want to objecti objectively measure optical properties of the eyes. So this gives the idea that I'm trying to explain today. While thinking about uh, how to uh, you know, uh, match uh, the need of um, objectively measure this, uh, uh, the focus curve, Francesco Versace once more came out and said, I have an idea. And uh, uh, actually what we started doing is applying his idea to a project that is still very uh, embryonic at the, at the moment. Uh, but I think it may have a, a reason to be developed in future. So we know that the uh, Pyramis or, or Osiris Averometer, call it as you like, it's the same machine, has uh, huge uh, abilities uh, to uh, give us, uh, you know, the optical properties uh, of uh, iOS, for instance. If you compare the uh, uh, ability and the accuracy for measuring uh, the uh, you know aberrations uh, of eyes who received uh, a presbyopic correcting eye like in this case a need of uh, you see that you can really find differences uh, among lenses uh, and you can really find details uh, that are not uh, measurable with uh, any other aberrometers especially if you measure these uh, uh, differences uh, using the dioptric power instead of the wavefront. Why is that? Because dioptric power is uh, more accurate uh, than wavefront. And I'll show you in a while what I'm saying. Um, we know that point spread function uh, is uh, uh, one of the ways uh, that we have uh, to measure the uh, performances of an, of an optical system. However, 
points expect function uh, and uh, relies on one uh, you know uh, data which is the wave front error you see here in the formula i'm not going to to, to the details but at some point it is uh, 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 wf uh, and xy that's the wave front so when we uh, use uh, a point spread function uh, to define the defocus uh, properties of uh, uh, an optical system we unfortunately get uh, less information just because the wavefront uh, is not as accurate uh, as uh, uh, dioptric power may be. And so here is where Francesco's uh, excellent idea came in. So he said, wh why don't we try to find a way to use the same information that is uh, derived from uh, point spread function measurement, uh, but given by the dioptric power instead of the wavefront. And so, you know, researcher and finding, he found this uh, very elegant uh, uh, way for uh, uh, measuring the properties of the, of the, of the, of the, of the, of the uh, lens, uh, whatever it is, uh, using the geometrical point spread function. So you see here, uh, the geometrical point uh, spread function uh, does not uh, 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 include diffraction, uh, it's a ray tracing method to simulate uh, point spread function, which means that uh, if you see here in the image, uh, if you compare the details, uh, let's say the accuracy of a point spread function versus the geometrical point spread function, you see how you may, you, you may get more consistent information and less geometrical derived, uh, and more geometrical derived data than point spread function. For the same reason, uh, of obtaining more detailed, uh, you know, data when analyzing the wavefront uh, using the dioptric power versus the uh, wavefront. And see, you see here what uh, Francesco ended up with uh, uh, on the uh, left-hand side, uh, left side of the slide, you see the uh, measurement of a needle of lens uh, with uh, a defocus curve ranging between minus six, uh, minus seven to plus seven diopters. And you see here, there, really how the point spread function changes uh, over this uh, entire defocus curve. And you see here in the two uh, following uh, uh, photographs uh, how it is possible to define two specific uh, uh, points uh, where actually the focus uh, is more concentrated. And these two foci in this case uh, are at plus 0.21 diopters uh, and at minus 1.05, meaning that it is possible on an EDOF lens uh, to measure the, f the, the extension, of the, uh, the, the, the increase of the depth of focus. And here is where we are now. So we have uh, a defocus measurement, you see uh, this on the uh, X uh, axis, uh, and it is able to, put, it is able, at least now, we are able to uh, measure and plot uh, uh, the focus, uh, which is not uh, based upon uh, our lenses to be put in front of the eyes of our patients, uh, but derived uh, uh, objectively. What about the visual acuity then, which is the most challenging point of this, because uh, when the, 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 uh, if we are trying to do it uh, uh, objectively, we cannot rely on patients. We cannot rely on uh, you know other uh, functions like. Uh, for instance, the macular ability to uh, solve the light, uh, and so. And again, uh, Francesco was elegant uh, to find uh, another mathematical model. You see, you read here the spatial frequency cutoff of radially averaged uh, optical transfer function, which has been published uh, uh, by uh, Larry Tibos uh, many times in the past. Uh, Obviously, I'm not going through all of this because, uh, Francesco, if you like, you can come here and explain the audience <laughs> what is this exactly. But the most important point is that uh, what the spatial frequency cutoff of radially averaged optical transfer function uh, gives us the possibility to give cuts off uh, on uh, uh, the, the, this, this kind of measurement and define what uh, the performance of visual acuity may go through. And you see here what we have at the end. So we really have a defocus curve, very nice, very elegant, with a defocus power, like for diopters on the x-axis, 
and a visual acuity, obviously, objectively measured and not subjectively measured, so totally independent from the function of the eye, to describe that optics. And you see here how this, uh, 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 the focus curves, uh, this, the focus, two different, uh, I mean, same the focus curves, but these two different measurements, I go back to the peak of distance, uh, and I go to the peak uh, of uh, intermediate, uh, really describes uh, how are the optical properties of this specifically uh, uh, um, um, of Iwell that I'm not going to disclose what it is just because it's not nice and polite. So let's open the ground uh, about the potential possibility of it because now we have the possibility not just to, you know, as we said, measure what the eyes of the patients are doing in terms of uh, extension of the depth of focus, uh, we have the possibility to bring patients in front of the Osiris uh, or Paramis, call it, call it as you like, uh, and objectively measure what is their defocus. And I think this is, is very interesting from many point of view because uh, this may uh, open the uh, possibility to standardize measurements uh, uh, also according to different conditions, uh, like the light, uh, like the pupil size, uh, and really assess uh, whether these parameters uh, are, have an impact uh, in patients' uh, performances uh, when measuring them after, for instance, the implantation of uh, uh, presbyopic in IO. This kind of uh, uh, measure may uh, uh, help us as ophthalmologists, also ophthalmologists to really understand uh, what is given by the optics uh, of the eye that we are going to choose uh, to be implanted uh, and the anatomy of uh, the eye itself. Because we know there are many other factors uh, than the optics uh, properties of the eye well, which uh, lead to the final performance uh, of uh, 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 the patient uh, when reading at near, at immediate and distance, like the uh, curv corneal curvature, like the pupil, like the anterior chamber depth, uh, and all of that. I really think that this uh, may increase also the consistency and the accuracy of the defocus curves, uh, which, may not be, which may not be biased in this case uh, by the patient uh, and by the way that we uh, subjectively measure it. And also, in a theoretical future, these kind of uh, measures uh, may help us uh, as clinicians uh, to choose the best eye uh, to be implanted uh, according to preoperative values that we measure, like as I said, uh, the corneal curvature, the pupil size, uh, the anterior chamber depth, uh, as to really customize not just uh, the eye well on uh, a theoretical performance, uh, but uh, on uh, an objective performance that the eye well may have uh, on these individualized eyes. Um, there is a weak point, obviously. Because uh, what we can do today with the uh, Paramis uh, or Osiris uh, is measure one eye at a time. But I'm sure that uh, CSO has something in their list uh, to, 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 to present, uh, I hope, soon and uh, uh, you know, overcome this, this, this uh, downside of uh, being able to measure one eye at a time. So, uh, this slide represents very well what happened in the development of this uh, original idea. I, I just went to Francesco saying, Francesco, this is not my job, do it, please. Uh, and so I want to credit him uh, of, uh, about all the job that has been done, and I hope it's going to be followed uh, by, 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 by CSO in future. And I'd like to thank you all for your uh, attention and for being here this morning. Thank you.